Well, of course, when you first buy a bike like this, and you might not spend as much as this. This one cost me about, uh, I think, seven or 8,000 AUD. And uh, I did get some of the, the parts on this bike at uh, some pretty decent prices. But just say you've got your, you want to buy a new bike and you're just getting into cycling and you want a decent bike. So because you intend to ride it maybe at least once to three times a week, so you're pretty serious about doing it. Then you, what you need to do, you need to consider that when you buy, you just don't need one of these. You don't need a bike. You know, it's not like just riding up the shops or whatever, because when you ride all year or most of the year, or you're riding at least, you know, two to three times a week, you need a lot of other stuff. Otherwise, you're going to become pretty dissatisfied pretty quickly with riding your bike because conditions that you need for your bike and how you ride your bike make it uncomfortable or the weather conditions make it pretty miserable to ride. So you, what you need to do is you need to allow for those things and you need to budget for those things when you buy a bike so you have all those things ready so when those conditions confront you, you've got the right gear to ride your bike. Well anyway, let's roll that intro and let's get into what do you need besides having one of these. Well, the first thing I would recommend is some clothing. Now, clothing is really important because it's great when you go and do one of those nice river rides and the sun's shining, it's a beautiful day and it's 25 degrees. You can just even go with a t-shirt, some shorts, and that's really great. And you're probably just gonna have some sneakers, some flat pedals, and that'll do the trick. But when you wanna ride consistently, and you either wanna do that for commuting or exercise, and you've made a commitment to, as I said, do it two to three times a week, then the climate doesn't always suit when you want to ride. So you need to be prepared for different conditions. Now, the first conditions I would say is cold weather, and that depends where you live. In Australia here, we have pretty mild winters, it only gets down to around about one or two degrees Celsius, but you may live in Northern Europe where the temperatures get much colder. So what you need to do is you need to have clothing that suits those conditions. Now I've got a couple of bits of gear here I just want to show you that you need for in these different conditions. Now the first thing I have here is this is basically what they call a gilet and it has no sleeves on it but this particular gilet is windproof so if I try to breathe through it I can't. So it's not just a cloth that I wear it actually stops the wind and once the temperatures start to get down, fairly cool, like around about 10 degrees Celsius or lower, one of the biggest problems you have is the wind chill. So what you need is you need something like this that is going to stop that cold wind going, blowing through your clothes and it's going to keep you warm. So these things are pretty important once the temperature starts to get a bit cool. And if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, that actually may be a big part of the year that you have to wear something like this. Now, the other thing that I've got here is a rain jacket. Now, a rain jacket is pretty important, and this one here is a Santini one, but you don't even need to buy something this expensive. One of those plastic rain jackets works pretty well, but make sure it's fairly long, so it covers your bum, so when you're on the bike, you don't have an exposed section. But basically, it's to keep you dry. Yes, these make it a bit hotter to ride, but so you just need to ride slower, but at least you can still ride and you can still stay dry. Now, when you wear one of these, you what I would recommend is that you get some plastic pants as well, and you get some overshoes, which keeps you completely dry, especially shoes, because once shoes get wet, they're really difficult and hard to get to dry. Now, in here, I've got some some overshoes and some just wet weather pants. Now the wet weather pants are just pants that you get from a safety shop, so they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty easy to pick up. Now these are the overshoes, the, they're just these. These ones are called hydrophobic, they're by Triple B, and these actually stop the water getting in, so they're pretty good. They're not just to keep your feet warm. You can actually buy ones that just designed to keep your feet warm, but they're not, they're not waterproof. Um, you can buy those, and you can wax them. I actually have another video that shows you how to wax them. 
but uh, you have to continually do the waxing maybe every month or so to keep them waterproof. Here I have some wet weather pants. So these ones here, uh, these ones, <laughs> I've had them for a number of years, but um, they do the job fantastic. Okay, you don't look, um, you know, pro, pro cyclist, but it does keep you dry. These things, if I wear the overshoes, I wear these, and I wear my rain jacket. When I get to work, I take them off, and I'm, I'm dry. So that's something to consider if you're going to do wet weather riding. Now, the other thing you need to consider when you buy your new bike is that bikes don't come with pedals. It's, uh, I know if, when people first get into cycling, they go, how can you buy a bike that doesn't have pedals on it? But once you get away from the real budget type bikes, this is pretty common. And the reason why that is, is because there's different pedal systems on the market and they do that so people can buy whatever pedal systems that they're used to, or they may have pedals they've had from their previous bike and they want to put them on their new bike. Now, the three main systems, there is more, but there's three main systems, which is the Look System, which is a French company, which is the actual brand of this bike as well. There's the Shimano Road SPDs, and then there's the Shimano mountain bike pedals. And the mountain bike pedals are actually quite different. So if you want to ride road shoes, then you can either use the Shimano Road, or you can use the Look Kio type pedals and a road shoe will bolt to that. But if you want to use a mountain bike pedal and a mountain bike shoe, it's a completely different system. The shoes are different, the cleat's different, and the pedal's different. But the advantage with the mountain bike pedals and shoes is you can walk in the shoes quite easily, whilst if you have road shoes and pedals, the shoes are not so easy to walk in. But the road shoes are lighter, your feet stay cooler, and they're yeah, they're lighter, so for road. But the mountain bike, if you want to have the convenience of being able to walk, so you go somewhere and you want to keep your cycling shoes on, you can walk on your mountain bike shoes just like normal shoes. So you need to decide what system you want to use for your bike. And they can actually be quite expensive depending on what type of shoes and, and systems you want to use. Now, the other third big accessory you need is a helmet. Now, the single most important thing about a helmet is that it fits you well, because normally when you're riding, you're wearing that helmet for quite a long time, so it needs to feel comfortable. If it's causing pressure or anything on your head, or it's pushing down on your glasses or whatever, you'll find it will be quite annoying and quite uncomfortable. Now, I've just got a few helmets here. I like the Cask brand, but there's many other really good brands on the market. And normally, if you buy more expensive helmets, that's also got to do with probably lightness and comfort compared to the cheaper ones. They all meet a minimum standard, so safety-wise, they all should be just as safe as each other. Now, apart from the safety side of things, when you, you get a helmet, the helmets have vents in them like this. Now, this one here is called a semi-aero helmet. It has some holes in the front, but over the top here, it's enclosed. So that one there um, would be good in kind of not such warm conditions. Once the conditions get hot, this helmet is not that great. Compared to this one here, which has a lot more holes in it, it has a lot better ventilation. So in the summer, I like to wear this one in particular because it's very, very good in our climate and keeps your head cool because it gets really hot in Australia in the summer. We can have 40 plus degrees. And even if you ride in the morning, you could be riding, you know, over 30 degrees before you get back home. So you want something that's very well ventilated compared to something like this. And then for the winter, I like to use a different helmet that's more enclosed because it keeps my head warm. And you might think, yeah, well, so what? But um, your head dissipates 40% of your heat. So if it's cold and you can keep that heat within the helmet, that actually helps keep you warm. Plus also, your head can get quite cold. And this helmet I have here has a vent so I can close it and open it. And I find this really advantageous in those spring and autumn months because in the morning I can keep it closed when it's quite cool. And then when I come home in the afternoon, I open up and I can get some more ventilation. So 
I like to have a different number of helmets for the different seasons, which does work out quite expensive, but you can buy one that's ventilated and then put some sort of headgear underneath them, like a buff or a cap, to reduce the cold air that's coming through your vents. So, in conclusion, if you're starting to get into cycling and you want to get fit and you want to use that to trim up or you just like to ride to work, you enjoy riding a bike and it's a new sport you're taking up, you need to remember that buying the bike is not the only expense that you need to account for because these items that I've talked about now can add up to quite significant, probably even as much as a bike because the helmets can be up to $500 AUD, clothing you could easily spend more than $500. You may be able to budget on some stuff, but clothing is expensive, and especially if it's a cycling particular brand, they're very, very expensive. And then also you have pedals. Now, depending on the pedals, they have different levels of performance. Some have roller bearings in, some have bushings in. So, what, so they can become quite expensive as well. And the shoes that actually go with those pedals are really expensive. They're normally about double of what you would pay for a sports shoe. They would start around AUD, maybe just over $100, maybe $100 to $150, and they can go up to about $600 AUD. So they're significantly expensive. And you need to consider all of those costs when you're getting into, the, you know, into cycling, because if you have all that stuff, when the weather it's not that perfect 25 degree day and the suns are shining, you have that gear to make yourself comfortable so then you don't dislike or don't want to get on the bike for that day because hey, it's cool or it's raining or whatever. Okay guys, well that's where I'm going to leave it and I hope that helps those people who are interested in starting up cycling or they know a friend who's interested in starting up cycling. Cheers. <laughs>